Yeah, I'm sweating right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel good though. Um, just uh, this was fun, and then uh, got some Bellator stuff in a little bit, and then uh, a little bit of weight cutting, and then I'm done. Where is your weight at right now? I was, I'm probably like 165 right now. I was 163 earlier after I worked out this morning. Um, I like to get down pretty close. There's no reason to cut a ton of weight. Um, for me, the weight cut started four weeks ago, and I've been disciplined ever since then, and that's the right way to do it. You see these guys cutting 20 pounds in one, in one day, it's just foolish. Since the last fight, since the last time you fought Eddie, how have you improved and what have you improved on? Um, I think I've just proved, improved all around. You know, when, when you give a guy like me two years um, to work, uh, to practice, to get my butt kicked in the gym every single day, I'm going to get better in every area. Um, you know, I, I watched that first fight and, and I see a lot of things, a lot of mistakes that I made, a lot of, I was just a different fighter. I didn't have as good of movement. I didn't have as, as good of cage awareness. I didn't have as good of, um, I didn't have as fast of hands and I didn't hit as hard. Um, so I just feel like I've improved everywhere. Um, but so is he, you know, I'm not, I'm not taking, you know, my improvements for granted. Um, and thinking that I'm gonna be able to go run through him because I know he's improved. He's finished two guys since we fought, so it's exciting. He said you were a great champion, and he said you might be a great champion, but he still wants to kick your butt. How do you respond That's to good. that? That's good. That's the way it should be. You know, if I was in his position, I would uh, I would hope the guy who has the belt is a great champion. You know, um, I don't pride myself on being you know the best lightweight in Bellator, the best you know lightweight champion of Bellator, or even when I'm considered the best lightweight in the world, I, I'm, I'm focused on becoming a great man. And uh, if I become a great man, I do the right things. The the fighting and the winning is going to take care of itself. You know, so I pride myself on being a guy who's not just a great fighter but a great man. So. I would hope that he thinks I'm a, a you know a great champion, and you know he should want to kick my butt. He's got to step into the cage with me in, in a day and a half, and uh, we're gonna fight. So I'm excited. What was your first response when you heard that Tito got injured and that you guys would be the headliner? My first response was, was uh, you know I just got to call my my manager and figure everything out. You know don't jump to conclusions. Don't um, you know of course as fighters you know shows get canceled all the time. Opponents get hurt and pull out all the time. You know I saw it just last year or a couple months ago. Dave Jansen pulled out and I postponed my, my fight nine nine weeks later. So essentially I was in training camp for, you know, 16 or 18 weeks or whatever it was. So it was crazy. Um, so immediately, you know, it's like, oh gosh, hopefully I'm still fighting this weekend. But I talked to my manager who had just got off the phone with Tim Danaher and everything is, uh, has worked out the way that you guys know it's going to work out. So we're, uh, we're on for uh, Saturday night on Spike TV in front of millions of people. Ed, Eddie said he kind of expected that. He knew it was going to happen. He knew you guys were going to headline this fight. Do you agree with that? Did you have that in mind? Did you think, hey, maybe Tito and Rampage might get hurt and we would be the headliners? Um, you know, you never, you never, you never hope that. You know, no matter, no matter who it is, you know, you don't hope guys get hurt. And not that I'm saying Eddie did think that, but um, or did hope that. But you know, for me, I don't care whether I'm the main event or the first fight on the card on Spike.com or, you know, if I fought somebody right here, it doesn't matter to me. My preparation is the same. It's all the same. The same thing is on the line. The belt's on the line. Pride is on the line. Um, and uh, you know your your reputation, your rank as a, as a fighter is on the line. So um, for me, I, I didn't really think too much about it. I was focused on November second, whether I was um, the main event or the first fight on the card. What have you brought to Bellator <clears throat> as a champion? Um, you know, I I, I I wouldn't you know be able to sit here and just uh, you know talk about myself too much. But you know, I mean, I, I would hope just somebody who, uh, who who trains his tail off and and goes in and lays it on the line every every single fight. Um, you know, I, I'm here to put on a, a great show and go out there and dominate people. You know, whether it, whether it be in 10 seconds or whether it be a 25 minute war, um, you know, I'm gonna take the fights, the fights as they come, but my preparation is always the same. My discipline is always the same. My, my preparation is always the same. So I just pride myself on being a great man, um, a guy who's hopefully always in the headlines for good things and not, you know, not the bad things that sometimes our sport gets uh, kind of uh, associated with, you know. So that's what I try to do and, and Bellator has been great to me. Um, so I'm excited about this opportunity. I'm excited to just keep on kicking butt. Do you ever think about transcending the sport? You know, given the platform that you have, it, the, the spike platform, there's a lot of, it seems like there's a lot of opportunities to get sort of in, uh, to, to expand your visibility. Do you think about that at all? Absolutely, you know, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, um, you know, as with, with the obligation and, and the responsibility that we have as professional athletes, um, 
you know, we're not as big as the NFL guys. We're not as big as the baseball, you know, the guys who just won the World Series last night. We're not we're not on that level, but there's a, there's a large fan base and there's a large following in this sport and there's an obligation to be able to go out and reach people and, and do great things and have and have, you know, parents look at me and say, "Man, I want my kid to grow up like like Michael Chandler." You know, that's that's one of my goals. So, anything that's going to get me out there more, anything that's going to have my voice be heard or have me on camera or doing certain things is, is always a, a positive for me, and I and I want to take every every single opportunity um, that I have. And, and given this given this opportunity with Viacom Spike, man, it's just it's great. And it, uh, you know the sky really is the limit with this company and, and with our reach as fighters. Mike, would you want to renegotiate your contract when the time comes so it mirrors something like a Rampage contract, a Tito contract? Um, as far as what the the, the movie stuff, the, the guaranteed movie stuff, you know, the, the wrestling and all that. Um, I would say movie stuff, not wrestling. Um, you know, nothing against wrestling. I, I just, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not really thinking about much besides fighting right now. You know, so my uh, my goal of my this next you know little chapter of my my career is just to continue to get better. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's always great. You know, when whenever you can sign a. A uh, contract with a fight organization, and it's not just about fighting in your contract. It's it's always a plus. So, um, like I said, there's great opportunities here with with Spike and Viacom. So, I'm excited about that. Excited about the possibility.